the wind and waves be still you cast out demons bid the empty soul be filled now there's breakthrough now there's freedom in your name you gave us power and the keys to do the same you hold redemption made accusers drop their stones you showed us mercy with your mighty miracles now there's breakthrough now there's freedom in your name you gave us power and the keys to do the same now we proclaim in jesus name in jesus name in jesus name
Thank you, Jesus. Amen, amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. It's wonderful to see you in the house of God today. If you would, turn to somebody next to you, shake their hand, greet them. Tell them it's wonderful to see them here today. Amen, amen. You may be seated after you've done that. Amen, amen. Well, thank the Lord. I do have a few announcements. I do want to say if this is your first time here at New Life Church in Ames, we're so grateful and thankful that you are here with us today to worship and praise the Lord. I want to announce that the reach groups that we are doing, we have already started. They are running for 12 weeks, and we will... Um, We've already started, and this will go until the last week of April. This will be one semester. It is not too late to sign up. The sign-up sheets, they are still out there. They're still in the welcome uh, vestibule area. So please take the opportunity, if you have not signed up yet, to sign up for one of them. Be a part of one of these reach groups, and you will be blessed in Jesus' name. I believe that. Amen. And then we have a special announcement Sister Diana, you go right ahead. All right. It's February 12th. <laughs> it is Valentine's Dinner Day. Woo! Today is the day where you'll be eating a very delicious meal prepared and served by our fantastic youth. <laughs> so there are still plenty of people who have mentioned that they are coming but have not paid um, there are people who have said they would like to come, but I do not have your name. So if that is maybe you, please double check and make sure we have your name down. We just want to make sure we have enough food for everyone <laughs> that is wanting to come. It is $15 per person. Everyone is welcome to join us as a church body, and we will fellowship together. It will be a meal of pork loin, mashed potatoes, green beans, and we will have a brownie bar with ice cream for dessert. So you are all welcome to join. Thank you. Amen. Well, I am excited about that. The last time we had it, I knew, or I know, and I remember, I was treated very, very well by the youth. So if you come and you take part in that, they will treat you very good. Amen. I do have a couple more announcements. Marriage retreat is coming up. Um, it is actually this Friday and Saturday. It is at the Doubletree in Cedar Rapids. If you want to go, please connect with me or Sister Jen. We'll give you the information that we have. Or you can actually go to Iowa Youth Ministries Facebook page. If that is easier for you, you can go right there. You can find information on registration and everything there. I do have... The last announcement is on Friday, 24th of February, there is a ladies' regional meeting, and it's down in Des Moines, and it is focused on a Spanish group. Amen? Brother Armando, you're in the back translating, doing such a great job. S Sister Milvian, somewhere, you're hearing this. But there is a, there's a ladies' regional event that you can go be a part of. It will be a Spanish group but I don't believe that you will not be blessed if you don't speak Spanish and you, you don't uh, understand it. You can still go. You can still be a part of that, and you can still be blessed in Jesus' name. If you have any questions, you can talk to Pastor Fleming about it after service today. Amen. He said, see. Si. Before service, he said, we. Oui. Now that he knows it's Spanish, he said, see. Si. Pastor, I'm really thankful for you. Amen. You know what? If our ushers would please come, we will receive the morning tithe and offering today. And if you would, please stand with me. We're going to pray over the offering. We're going to pray over this service that the Lord would have his way. Who's excited to be in church today? Amen. Who's excited that the Lord will do something in your life today? Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Let's pray together. Lord, we love you. Lord, we thank you for your goodness and your grace today. Lord, thank you for this beautiful day that you've given us. And Lord, we pray your blessing over this offering. That, Lord, it would push your kingdom forward. Jesus, we just pray that you would bless the giver, Lord. That you would touch them, oh God, in a special way. 
And Lord, we pray that you would bless this service. I pray that God, you'd speak to every person that is here. I pray, Lord, that you would touch every person in a way that they need today, Jesus. Lord, help us, oh God, to lift you up and to glorify you. We praise you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Let's remain standing and lift our hands up. We thank you, Jesus, for all that you're able to do. We're so thankful for the miracles that you perform. And we know, God, that you are able to do absolutely anything, Lord, and we're putting it all before you right now. We are proclaiming, we are standing here proclaiming the victory, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. There is a name that's a place I can run and be safe there is a name that can heal calm my storm peace be still i can call on that name and be There's no greater name than Jesus, Jesus. There is a name that's a place I can run and be saved. There is a name that can heal, calm my soul.
Let's believe it right now that he is here. He is moving in this place. Let's put all our faith, all our confidence in the one that is able to do absolutely anything. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. 
Amen, amen. Let's entertain the presence of the Lord here for a while today. Amen. Jesus, we love you. We praise you. We worship you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Amen, amen, amen. Just put a hand in the air. Amen. Let's entertain God's presence for a while. Jesus, your presence is here. Your strength is here. Thank you, Lord, for coming into this place. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for creating an atmosphere, oh God, where anything is possible. And Lord, your presence, oh God, has come so close to us. Thank you, Lord, for being so personal. Thank you, Jesus, for caring about us and our situations of life. Thank you, Lord God, for your glory and your strength and the manifest presence, Lord. God, we praise you for it today. We thank you for it today. Amen, amen, amen. Thank the Lord, amen. Well, amen. It's great to be in church on a Sunday morning, and greater than that, it's great to feel the presence of the Lord in church on a Sunday morning. And I'm just thankful, amen, for what I feel in this place. You know, it's good just to be honest with God. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Just being honest with God and open and just opening up your heart, your life to him. It's really what he wants more than anything else. He just wants us to be open to him. He wants us to have a heart that's longing for him. Sometimes I say God comes to church to see our faith. God wants to know, do you really, do you really believe what you're saying? Are you really true? Are you really real? <laughs> And, uh, and, and I think when we're just honest with God, when we're just open, there's something so special that comes and happens. Amen. So I just appreciate, I just, I'm just saying thank, thank you for expressing your worship to the Lord. We heard a great lesson this morning, and the lesson really was what you get for the one that has everything. What do you give to God? <laughs> what can you give him? I mean, you know, we come to church, we receive from him, but what in the world can we give to God? I mean... And the truth is, you know what he wants more than anything else? He just wants your expressions of praise and worship and adoration. In other words, we don't just come here to minister to one another. We come here to minister to the Lord. We come here to lift up his name. We come here to brag on Jesus a little bit. I don't know if you ever had a, a dad you bragged on or had friends that bragged on their dad, but that's kind of what we do. We come to brag on our Heavenly Father. Amen. So this morning... I'm going to read just a couple scriptures, and then I've got a message, amen, and I do believe it's for our hearts today, so let's, um, you can look on the screen or turn on your device, but I'm in, I'm in 1 Corinthians 10, I'm reading just the first four verses from 1 Corinthians 10, and um, I'm reading out of New King James this morning, but the Apostle Paul, speaking to the church in Corinth, he says these words to them. He said, moreover, brothers, and you could say, children of the Lord, I don't want you to be unaware that all our fathers were under the cloud. They were all passed through the sea. They were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. They all ate the same spiritual food, and they drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. So he said, I, I want you to be aware when the children of Israel came out of Egypt, God did many, many different things for them. He said when they went through the Red Sea, they all went through together. God made the way for all of them together. And there was a divine guidance system above them. There was a cloud that went before them and helped them. And he said, when they got hungry, God fed every one of them. How many of you know God can feed you? And he said, and when they got thirsty, wherever they were, there was this rock that seemed to be there that would satisfy that thirst for them. There was a rock that followed them. And that's the message this morning, the rock that followed them. Just look at your neighbor and say, he's right behind you.
He's right behind you. Matter of fact, he's been following you for a long time. How many of you know God doesn't catch up to you when you get to church? He's been there all along. God's pretty big that way, and he knows a lot of stuff. Let's pray. Amen. Jesus, we love you. I thank you, Lord. God, there's no accidents. There's no accident, Lord, the people that are here. They're supposed to be here. Lord, this is an appointment. This is a setup. This is your plan. Lord, this is your church. It's not my church. Lord, it's your church. It's your kingdom. It's your glory, and it's forever. And I just pray that your will would be done. I pray your purpose would be accomplished. Anoint our ears, God, to hear your word, our hearts, Lord Jesus. Let it be open to you and give us, Lord Jesus, bread from heaven, God, so we'll never, Lord, want any more. Give us, Lord Jesus, something that will quench the thirst of our soul today. Do that work, Lord, and we'll give you the praise for it. We will be careful to give you the praise. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Just say in Jesus' name. Amen. And you may be seated today in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm so thankful to be in church. I really believe the Lord has something special for someone today. And um, this is not about us. It's about people that God is trying to minister to. Paul taught the Corinthian church a great deal about Jewish history. But it wasn't just to give them a history lesson. So when you come to church, you're not here for history lessons. And you're not just here to get information. Certainly you should learn something about the Bible when you're in church. But it's more than that. Church is a place where God touches you and you touch God. But Paul gave them Jewish background because the Jewish people had insights into the nature of God. They knew something about the Lord because the Lord had been teaching them for many, many years. And so Paul said, I want you to realize something. He said, when it comes to your Old Testament, and he really was kind of giving an overview. When you read 1 Corinthians chapter 10, you could say it's an overview of Exodus, Leviticus, and Numbers. <laughs> he said, I'm going to give it to you in one chapter so that you get the big points and kind of the big rocks of it. And, and, he, and he talks in 1 Corinthians 10, if I'm just faithful to the whole chapter, and I have to be because it's in the Bible and there's a reason God put it there. It really is about the fact that his kids were far from perfect. It was about the fact that they desired wrong things that he didn't want them to desire. It was about the fact that he was trying to grow them up in certain ways. How many of you know it's hard to grow up and it's not easy on us? And, and you could say there was a, a, a way in which God was trying to mature his people. There was a way in which God was trying to grow his people up, not to hurt them. God doesn't try to hurt people. It's for the purpose of allowing them to reach their full potential. How many of you know God doesn't always answer every one of our prayers the way we want them answered? And, and sometimes there's a good reason for that because God is not pampering us. God is not trying to just give us everything we want when we want it. God is not trying to spoil his kids. God is trying to grow us into a place so that he can use us for his glory. God has an overarching plan, and I'm thankful I'm not God. I'm thankful he's God. Every now and then when I pray, I say, God, it's your kingdom, it's your power, it's your glory, it's your church, it's your people, it's your plans, it's not my ability, it's not my strength, it's not my might. His name is Jesus. That's who's strong. That's who can handle the pressure that you're facing. That's the place where you can run to. That is the refuge for you. And so to everyone that came out of the storm-tossed world that you're living in, the, the, the truth today is, the message you need to hear is, there is a rock in the middle of your storm-tossed life. There is an anchor that you can hold on to. God already knows where you are and as a matter of fact, he's been everywhere you've been. 
There's a rock that's following you. I said, there's a rock that is following after you. Amen. So Paul is explaining to them, and he's saying, God never just blessed his people, the Jewish people, just to bless them. He blessed them so that they can be a blessing and an example to every other person in this world. And I love these things, these principles in the Bible, because what it's saying is, listen, if God ever blesses any person in this church, God will bless every person in this church. God doesn't just bless one person just so that they get a blessing and they, they can shout about it. God blesses someone because if you function by the same principles they're functioning by, you're going to get the same blessing. God doesn't just have a special little group of people and say, well, you're the blessed people, but the rest of the world is out of luck. No, God is pouring out of his spirit on all flesh. Thank the Lord. And so Paul, he says, I don't want you to be ignorant. The Bible's full of examples. Israel started out, you could say, when they came out of Egypt, they started out well because they had many spiritual advantages. But he said, you can't start out living in the spirit and then go back and be an overcomer in your flesh. You have to continue in the same way that you started in the spirit. And so Paul is talking about a time when Israel came out of Egypt. You could say they were out of Egypt, but not all of Egypt was out of them. And so the challenge that took place was God had to allow them to go through certain places until Egypt came out of them. God can give you the right desires. God can teach you the right things. But it's not an immediate situation many times. I'm so thankful God can take the taste for something out of your life through the power of his spirit. And I know that can happen immediately. But I also know that life change takes place over time. And so there's this process that's going on. And the children of Israel, sometimes they're disobedient. Sometimes they're not actually pleasing God in the way in which they're moving forward. And yet... God never leaves them in that place. And this is the greatness of this message today because it's not for the perfect performer. It's not for the person that has it all figured out. It's not for the person that has every I dotted, you could say, and every T crossed. But the message is for real people living in a real world. And the Apostle Paul said, I know the church is far from perfect. I know there's all sorts of problems in struggles in the church but he said there's some things you need to know about God before we talk about the struggles and the problems in the way in which God is going to clean up the church and God can do it better than you and I can do it the spirit of the Lord can come and and put his finger in the middle of your life and say that's got to go and when God does it you're going to love it when God does it if if the if the, another person did it you wouldn't be able to handle it but when God comes comes along with his love and his mercy and his compassion. He can love you to places that nothing else can get you to. Amen. God's spirit is able to do things, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. And the Bible says that when God came to deal with Israel, he deals with the church the same way. And Paul said, I don't want you to be ignorant because when they came out of Egypt, in spite of their challenges, there's a couple things that never left them. There was a cloud that went before them. And the cloud was always there. Every day during their wilderness journey, there was no day without the cloud. As a matter of fact, when they came out of Egypt, the last plague in Egypt was the painting of the blood on the doorpost and the lintel of the house. Just say the blood. The blood. The blood did what nothing else could do. The blood got them out when nothing else could get them out. The blood covering them could do for them what you could say every other miracle of Egypt and every other plague could not do. But when the blood was applied, 
like nothing could hold them because there was incredible power in the blood. And when they came out of Egypt, the Bible says there was a cloud that they were led by, directed by. It took them to strange places. It took them to a place where there's mountains on both sides and there's a sea in front of them and there seems to be no way to get through. And the Pharaoh that let them go decided, I don't want them to go any longer. How many of you know you've got an enemy that doesn't want you to come in God's direction? And, and if you start coming in God's direction, you're going to find out it's hard to come in God's direction. In other words, he's going to make sure he tries to block the pathway. He's going to make sure he puts every reason in front of you as to why you can't really go forward in God, but the devil is a liar. The blood of the lamb is much more powerful. I don't care what you're into. If you get under that blood, you can come out of that place. And as they came out of Egypt, the Bible says there was a cloud that led them. Now, here's the great part. And when the enemy tried to get them from behind, the Bible says the cloud that was leading them suddenly swung around and it came behind them and it literally stood between them and the Egyptians for one whole night while Moses took a rod and put it out over the Red Sea and I know the movie might say or pretend like it all happened in one just moment in time but the Bible says it took all night long One man holding the rod over a Red Sea. (laughs) And God's spirit stopped between all of the Egyptians that were trying to kill the Israelites and the Israelites themselves. And the Bible says to one side it was light and to the other side it was extreme darkness. To one side they could see everything, on the other side they could see nothing at all. And Paul said, I don't want you to live in ignorance in the church of the living God. I don't want you to be someone that doesn't believe you have a direction when you actually have direction. I don't want you to be someone who thinks that God just brought you out into the wilderness to leave you there and allow you to be stranded when God doesn't want you to be left and stranded. He said, I want you to understand there's no such thing as a day in the wilderness without the cloud and there's no such thing as a day in the church of the living God without God's spirit there to direct his people. I love that because what it means is the preacher, when he gets up to preach, it's like God tapping me on the shoulder and saying, but I'm here with you, but I'm able to do it. I know you don't have the strength to do it, but I'm going to give you the strength to do it. I know you're not smart enough to do it, but I'm going to make you smart enough to do it. I know you don't have enough light to see, but I'm going to give you enough light to see. I know I know you're in places where it seems like the enemy is coming up behind you, but I'm going to make the way where there seems to be no way. There's no day without the cloud. I don't want you to live in ignorance. I don't want you to live in darkness. I want you to know what you need to know. Just look at your neighbor and say, you need to know this. You need to know this. This is something that has to get across to you today. In other words, this is my job. I can't let you go home until you know this. I'd I'd have to go stand at the back door and say, nope, you can't leave. Do you know this yet? Do you understand this yet? Paul is saying to the church in Corinth, he's saying, I do not want you to live in darkness. I don't want you to live like the rest of the people in this world. You're in the church of the living God. God can do anything he wants to do. God can show up anywhere he needs to be. I don't want you to live in a state of darkness. I don't want you to act like an unbeliever when really you've got access to a cloud that will go with you. It was a cloud by day. It was a pillar of fire by night. The sun can't smite you by day nor the moon by night. I'm going to go before you every day, and if there's a night that gets too dark for you, I'm going to turn a light on for you and I'll be a fire in your night. 
Don't live ignorantly. Don't live like it's not there when it's really there. Don't live like you can't see it when really through the eyes of your faith you can see it. Don't live like you're not my kids when really you are my kids. I'll never forget, I tell this story a lot. I'm going to tell it again. I was out knocking doors trying to get kids to come to Sunday school. And I had a father look at me and say, well, I'm so glad that you're coming to get my kid because there's a lot of hope for my son, but there's no hope for me. So I'll say what I said that day, and then I'll preach it a little bit. I looked at him and I said, that's exactly why I'm here, because there is hope for you. Look at your neighbor and say, there is hope for you. Don't pretend like there is no hope when there is hope. Don't pretend like you don't know what to do when you do know what to do. Don't pretend like you don't know who your God is when you do know who he is. Amen. He said, you've got to understand there is a cloud that was there every day, every day, every day. There was a cloud that was there. Did his kids ever get in trouble with him? Yes. Did God discipline them when they got in trouble with him? Yes, God did. Has God ever disciplined you? You don't don't raise your hand. Probably have to raise both hands and both feet, right? Amen. Not only that, but when they needed food, there was spiritual heavenly food for them. I don't want you to live in ignorance because when they needed the food, even though they didn't recognize it, because it came in a form that they did not recognize when it came. How many of you know Jesus can come in a form you don't always recognize or it's not always familiar to you? It doesn't mean it's not Jesus. I mean, he told them he was coming, and when he came, they said, oh, it's just the carpenter's kid. But it didn't mean it wasn't Jesus. (laughs) It was still the guy that could walk on water and call Lazarus out of the grave after four days. Don't pretend like you don't have bread when you do have bread. Don't live like God isn't there to supply for you when he's right there to supply for you. Now listen to me. It might not come in the form that you think it will come in. But he's never going to leave you. He's never going to forsake you. I've, I've, I've never seen the righteous forsaken or their kids out begging for bread. God is going to find a way to get it to you. God is going to find a way to feed you with it. Thank the Lord. Man doesn't live by bread only, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. There's a word for you today. There's a word in your wilderness. There's a word in your, in your trouble. Amen. How many of you know life is like a wilderness sometimes? There's, there's a word for you in where you are in your life. And so then he says, And by the way, the other thing I want you to know is there was a rock that followed them. We used to sing a little song, Rock of Ages. But they call it the Rock of Ages because in every age you could say, he's there. When you were 13, the rock was there. How many of you know God knows you better than anyone else knows you? There's been a rock that's been there. There's no day without a rock in it. And that rock has the ability to follow you. (laughs) This is kind of a strange message, isn't it? You can imagine this rock with little legs chasing you. You have to forgive my little thought process. He's not talking about it that way, so you think of it in terms of a rock running around. 
you need to understand the God that supplies for you has been following you. Listen to me. He saw every difficult place in your life. He's followed you up every difficult mountain you've ever had to climb. He's followed you down through every valley that you've ever walked through in your life. Pastor does not know everything about you. I wish I could help people more sometimes. I wish I could project myself into your shoes and feel what you're feeling. But listen to me, I can't do that. But there is a rock that has been following you. As a matter of fact, it's right behind you. How many of you know every now and then you catch a glimpse? Every now and then. If you turn back quick enough, you can trace the hand of God back there. Every now and then you can say things like, if it hadn't been for the Lord who was by my side, well, then where would I be right now? Thank God. We celebrated 20-year pastor, pastoral anniversary. I don't feel like I'm that old. But I will tell you this. I can look back and see places where I can see the hand of God that has come into my life. There's a rock that has followed after me. And my job is to stand up and say, don't be ignorant the same rock that followed me is following you. The same rock that cared for me is going to care for you. The same rock that supplied for me will supply for you. Amen. There's a rock, you could say, that's right behind you. Thank the Lord. There's so many places in Scripture that talk about a rock. And yet, I would say... Many times when you see it, it brings revelation to the people that are around. So the rock is connected to spiritual revelation. You see Jacob, who was running for his life. And by the way, Jacob was an individual that every time he got in trouble, he never stayed to face his problem. He just always ran away. How many of you know you can't run your whole life? <laughs> And after a while of running, Jacob, his legs got tired. I mean, he tried to steal a birthright away from his brother. And his brother said, I'm going to kill you. And that was not a good thing. And Jacob decided he'd rather be, you could say, a live coward than a dead hero. So he was running. <laughs> he was running for his life. He was trying to get away from his brother as fast as he could. And, and when his legs and feet got tired... He laid down that night, and he put his head on a rock. I heard one preacher say he finally got his head in the right place. <laughs> but when he put his head on a rock, and you wouldn't think the rock would be a place that would give you rest. And yet for Jacob, even though he was running from someone that was trying to kill him, even though he was running from a difficult thing in his life, you could say the only resting place he could truly find was in the rock. I don't know if there's any witness here in church today that could say, you know what? I found a rock that finally gave me rest. I found a rock that finally allowed me to clear my head. I found a rock that finally stopped all those things that were parading through my mind. I found a rock of revelation finally in my life. And when he put his head on the rock and God finally gave him a resting place, the Bible says as he was resting, he could see a ladder that was set up on this earth, but the top of it reached into a heavenly place. And he could sense that there were angels that were all around him. There were angels ascending and angels descending. And the very presence of God was in that place because he woke up the next morning and he said, surely the Lord was in this place and I didn't really even know it. But when I found the rock, when I put my head on the rock and he anointed that rock and he set it up and he said, 
said, I'm going to call this place God's house because this is the place where I found revelation. This is the place where God pulled back the curtain. This is the place where God started to show me something wonderful. Thank the Lord. It was a place of revelation for him. I think that's why Jesus says to Peter, on this rock I will build my church. And the gate of the enemy won't be able to stop it. Flesh and blood did not reveal this to you. But my Father who is in heaven... There's a rock of revelation. There's a rock, I believe, for all of us in the difficult places of our life. Thank the Lord. I want to read just a little bit out of Exodus 33, and then I won't be long today after that. But Exodus 33 and verse 16, it just says these words. Because as Moses was leading the children of Israel, the children of Israel, you could say, frustrated <laughs> many times <laughs> the grace of God uh, as a matter of fact Moses when he came down the mountain the first time that he had the ten commandments from the Lord the children of Israel before he even got down the mountain they had already disobeyed <laughs> the commandments and they were worshiping a golden cow and they were saying these are the gods that brought you out of Egypt now when you read first Corinthians 10 this is exactly what the apostle Paul refers to and it was during this time when God said, Moses, well, there were multiple conversations that went on, but God says to Moses, that's it. I'm not going to lead you anymore. I'll just send an angel to lead you. Now, this is what Moses says to God. Um, he said, well, how then will it be known that your people have found grace in your sight unless you go with us? So we shall be separate, your people and I, from all the people upon the face of the earth. In other words, God, the only thing that makes us your people is your presence. If we don't have your presence, we are not your people at all. The Lord said to Moses, well, then I'll do the thing that you're speaking of because you have found grace in my sight and I know you by name. And Moses said, I don't just want you to go before us. I want to see your glory. In other words, God... I want to speak to you face to face. God, I want to get in your presence and speak face to face. Now listen to me. The rock that followed them that he was alluding to was a rock that Moses had come and he had smitten with his rod because God said, if the people are thirsty for water, he said, I'll stand before you on a rock and I want you to come with your staff and your rod and I want you to smite the rock because I want people to know that it's the smitten rock that actually will quench the thirst of their life. And so you could say God wants you to know the power of the smitten rock. What does that allude to? It alludes to the death, the burial, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And when he was smitten on the cross of Calvary, everything that can quench the thirst in the hearts of God's people began to flow into this world. And so now Moses stands in God's presence and he says, God, I want to talk to you face to face. I want to see your glory. Show me more because I need your glory if I'm going to make it through the wilderness of the existence that I'm in right now. I think whatever age you are, you need God's glory for that wilderness. Show me your glory, Lord Jesus. The wilderness of my teenage years, I need your glory for that. The, the wilderness of my young adult days, I need your glory for that. The, the wilderness of my middle ages, I need your glory for for this wilderness. The wilderness, as I'm getting older, I'm going to need your glory if I'm going to make it through this place. God, I want to talk to you face to face. Thank the Lord. The Lord said, verse 19, I'll make all my goodness to pass before you. How many of you know God is a good God? How many of you know if God's goodness flows over your life, you're going to sense something? 
How many of you know God has a lot of goodness to flow over you? <laughs> he said, I'm going to proclaim the name of the Lord before you. Then he, he says, I love this scripture. I'll be gracious to whom I'll be gracious. I'll have compassion on whom I have compassion. This is really almost God showing off. God is just simply saying, I don't have to run this past anybody. If I want to be good to somebody, I'll just do it. If I want to help somebody, I'll just help them. If I want to reveal myself to someone, I'll just reveal myself to whoever I want to reveal myself to. He said, I'm, I'm going to get about the business of helping somebody. And then he says to Moses in verse 20, but you cannot see my face. No man will be able to see me and live. But here's a place by me. I'm going to put you on the rock. I'm going to put you in the rock. And it will be when my glory passes by, I'll put you in the cleft of the rock. I'll cover you with my hand while I pass by. He said, I, I want you to understand if your flesh sees me as I really am, something in you will die. <laughs> and I love Moses' response because he said, well, just give me as much as I can handle then. It's kind of like I heard this one kid talk about his mom about chocolate cake, and she said, if you don't stop eating that chocolate cake, I think if you have one more piece, you're just going to explode. And he said, well, then just slice me one more piece and let's get it over with. I'm just going to explode. This is kind of like Moses in God's presence. And God says, Moses, if you get any closer, you're going to die. And Moses said, well, just give me as much as I can handle without killing me. I love that. And he said, okay, but I'm going to have to put you in a safe place. And I'm going to pass by you, and then I'll pull my hand away, and I'll give you just as much as you can handle. <laughs> Amen. How many of you are thankful that we live in a day, in an age, when we know the name of Jesus? And what God said is, I'm going to veil myself in a way that people will be able to handle it, but it'll be so powerful, it'll transform them. That's who Jesus really is. Listen to me. There's a rock that is following after you. I don't want you to be ignorant about what is in this place today. I don't want you to be ignorant about what God can truly do for you today. There is a rock that is following after you. Now, there's all sorts of things that could be stated and said. But I'll cut to the chase because the second time Moses went back to the rock, God said, don't smite it. Just talk to it. Open your mouth and speak to the rock. Now we could say a lot about what Moses did and what happened as a result and all of that. But let's just talk about what the Bible said. The rock is there. The rock doesn't have to be smitten again. The price has already been paid. The rock has already been smitten. It's already available to give you what you need. And all you have to do is turn to the rock and speak to that rock. Now listen, I think Moses got angry at the people. I don't think Moses even wanted the people to get water out of the rock the, the next time he hit the rock. I think Moses was like, I hope you people never get water. And he was hitting the rock and... God let water come out of the rock anyways because God loves people that much. Even if someone mishandles the rock, the water's still going to flow out of the rock. Now, I'm not saying we should mishandle the rock. I don't think we should. But my point is this. There's a rock that's following. There's revelation that's very close to you. There's a word from the Lord that's very close to you. And that rock is Christ. I love what the psalmist says because the psalmist said, the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. 
he makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters, and he restores my soul. Thank the Lord. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. There's all sorts of places. He's the one that anoints my head with oil. He's the one that causes my cup to run over. He's the one that prepares the table before me in the presence of the enemy. He's the one that walks with me and shepherds me. Even if I go through the valley of the shadow of death, I don't have to be fearful because he's right there with me. His rod, his staff, they're there for me. But at the end, I love the scripture when it says, surely. Surely. For sure. It's going to happen every time. Surely. Goodness and mercy will follow me some of the days of my life. Every day of my life. He's been there every day. I said he's been there every day. Every day. He's right behind you. He's there for you. He's been there for you. There's revelation for you. Some people believe in words of prophecy. Others do not, and that's okay. But I read a prophecy just recently that was given by a lady. Her name was Claudette Walker. I want to read the words to the church. It was printed in a publication. It just says this, My precious children, I would say unto you today that I understand that you do not understand. I feel your confusion. I feel your heaviness. You've cried out to me, but many of the things... You have asked of me, I have denied. I understand that this is difficult for you. My call unto you, my children, is to trust me. I'm asking you to trust me. I have you in a spiritual gym. I'm adding weights to the barbell each day. This is not because I'm an uncaring father, but because I'm a loving father. I know how strong your spiritual muscles must be to endure these last days so I add more weights to the barbell. Your faith muscles must exert and become stronger to fight and to stand in this day when the spirit of Antichrist is exponentially increasing every day. The war is raging, my children. I'm preparing you to become victors. Do not despise the process I'm putting you through. I'm causing you to lift heavy weights. Every time you lift the weight and declare my word, in spite of how you feel, your faith in me grows. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of the Lord. So I urge you to bathe yourself every day in my word, cling to my word, speak my word, in spite of what you see, and your faith will grow. And you will not only make it through these last days, but you will be strong and will do exploits. I must not pamper you, I must not coddle you, but I must train you. My coming is nigh, even at the door. Yet before I come, there will be a great outpouring of my spirit. I'm preparing you to bear the weight of my glory. Stand against these evil spirits that come against you, my children. Although I allow heaviness upon the inhabitants of the earth this day, I'm raising you up, for I am training you. I don't know if it does to you what it did to me when I read those words. But I felt God's spirit. And I felt a witness inside of me. The Bible says you should try the spirits. <laughs> and I think what I'm discerning is it's for us right now. It's for the church in this age right now. Listen to me. Before Jesus comes again, we might not get the prayers answered. We might want to get answered in the way we want them answered. But it's not because God doesn't care about us. It's because he has such a great plan for you that if he doesn't allow the weight of that to come into your life, you will not be prepared for the things that are coming in your tomorrow. He's not the rock of right now. He's the rock of ages. He sees the end from the beginning. Stand with me if you would today.
Amen. Speak to the rock. Speak to the rock. You know what's happening when we come down to the front of a church and we just open up our mouth and talk? I say it many times. There's no difference between the back of the church and the front of the church. But when we come to a front of a church many times, what we're saying to God, we're making a statement to the Lord. We're saying, you know what, God? I want to come closer to you. I think like Moses were saying, God, I want as much of you as I can get. Amen. How many of you want so much of God you're just about to explode? Just God, whatever it takes. The rock has already been smitten. Everything you need to flow from the rock to your life is already there. But you need to open up your mouth and you need to speak to the rock. Talk to the rock. Speak to the rock. He can handle whatever it is you need to say. He's strong enough to handle it. Run to the rock. I know he's able. Go to the rock. Speak to the rock. pastor I've talked to this person I've talked to that person they don't have answers go to the rock Jesus I need a drink from you I need something to come and fill the thirst that's in my life I'm not finding this anywhere else I'm coming to you you are the counselor. You are the mighty God. You are the everlasting Father. You are the Prince of Peace. Jesus, I need a peace speaker. Jesus, I need rest in this area of my life. Jesus, that's what I need from you today. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Don't be ignorant. Don't walk out the door thinking it's a history lesson. Don't walk out the door thinking, well, it's not for me right now, today. No, this is for the church right now. This is for you. This is for me. There's a rock that's following you. There's a rock that's following you. And it's a supplier for what you need today. It's a supplier for what you've just been through this last week. It's, it's the supplier. It's the revelation that you need. There's a rock. There's a rock that's there. Amen. Amen. If you're in this place today and you feel God's spirit moving on you and ministering to you, I just want you to come and stand in the front of this church. We'll just come and stand across the front. that's here today for Isabel for a healthy pregnancy and she's already gone through one miscarriage but believing God to, to help her so I'd, I'd like to get some ladies from the church to surround Isabel and pray with her amen we'll anoint her with oil we'll pray a prayer of faith but listen if you're here today and there's just something going on in your life and you need to talk to the Lord about it whatever it is I just want you to open your mouth and talk to the Lord. Talk to the Lord. Let's pray together. Jesus, in your name, you're here. You care about us. You see us, Lord, where we are. 
And, God, you know if there's anything, Lord, that's out of place between me and you, God, I just pray you'd take it out of the place, out of the way. And I humble myself. I repent, Lord God. Every time I try to do it on my own, it never works out. But when you do it, Lord, you do all things well. So, Lord, first of all, I just come and I humble myself. And second of all, Lord, I just pray that you would be the King of kings and the Lord of lords in every area of my life. I pray, Lord God, that you'd fill me full of your spirit. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you'd direct me. I pray that you'd help me in every way. I pray, Lord Jesus, that I would be able to see with eyes of faith. Let there be a spirit of wisdom and revelation, Lord, that comes on your people today. Help us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Jesus, I pray.
always guides me through mountains and valleys. His joy is refreshing, restores my soul. Mercy.
Let's pray one more time together. Jesus, we thank you for your great presence today. Lord, I thank you for everything, God, that you have done in this place. But more than that, I'm thankful that you follow us, Lord, as we leave this place. And I, I thank you for your goodness. I thank you for your mercy. I thank you for being the rock, Lord God. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for being the one that brings revelation and manifestation. I thank you, Lord Jesus. I pray, oh God, that the things that have taken place, Lord, in this house, oh God, would just simply follow us throughout this week. Allow us, Lord, to represent you well wherever we go and help us, Lord God, to just simply continue the conversation with the rock of ages, Lord, as we leave this house, God. Help us throughout this week, Lord. God, we give you praise for it. We thank you in every way today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise, if you would, before you leave. Amen. Amen. God is very, very good to us. Amen. All right, so here's your job. You ready for this? You need to encourage someone before you walk out the door. Smile at them. Shake their hand and encourage them. Amen. That's your job. So make sure you do that at least once before you get to the parking lot. The Lord bless you real good. Amen. In Jesus' name.